Vapors Cloud. We all recognise the name Vapors Cloud. They've come out with a number of pretty damn good RDAs, a number of pretty damn good RTAs, two of which I'm still using the Osiris's. I mean, hell, I reviewed their Osi I reviewed the Osiris's something like six months ago, and I'm still using both the tanks. Still using both the tanks, but now they've released this. It's not a stock coil sub, but it's not a, it is a stock coil sub home tank. It's not a rebuildable, not a rebuildable, it's not an RBA. It's a stock coiler. And I was kind of surprised at this. And then I realised, well, here's the thing. The biggest market segment for tanks is not rebuildables. It's never been rebuildables. The biggest market segment for tanks discounting borrow tanks right now, the biggest market segment is the stock coil sub on tank market. And it's always been the biggest chunk of the market. So it's only right for a company that's known for producing sub ohm based rebuildables and sub ohm based rebuildable tanks to come out with a tank that would slot perfectly in to the stock coil sub ohm market. And that's exactly what they're doing. This is the shift and it's time for a tank review. Before we head on to the review, did you know that 60 to 70% of the people that's watching these videos are not subscribed to the YouTube channel? Head over to YouTube if you're watching this somewhere else and click on the big red subscribe button down below the video. Doesn't cost a thing and click on the notification bell as well and you'll be notified of any other reviews that pop up on the channel, including the UK Vape Show, which is the UK's longest running and most viewed vape show broadcasted every Thursday from the UK, that's Thursday evening, and of course, the What's Up Sunday update vlog out every Sunday, and the upcoming season four of eSig 101. Let's head round and have a look at this tank, shall we? So, yeah, you get the usual stuff, your little instruction manual, you get a whole bunch of O-rings, and more importantly, they do include a spare coil with this. Having a look at the tank, starting from the top, you do, of course, have your 810 based mouthpiece. So you can pop your own 810 based mouthpiece on this. Quarter ton bayonet fitting. You've got a flat valve thing going on here to fill the tank up. Airflow control is down here. Fully adjustable. Here's your airflow control there. And another set of airflow control honeycombs at the other side. Again, fully adjustable. If we give this bottom part a spin, the bottom cap is also basically bayonet cap fitted there's the lock for the bayonet down here, so it's very easy to open this thing up, folks. Very easy. And the coil, basically, if we can get this bloody thing out, there we go, the coil basically push fits into this cradle down at the base. You'll probably recognise this coil head design. Yeah, you'll probably recognise it. So this tank is compatible with other manufacturers' coils. You don't need to buy the ones that you get from uh, the ones that you get from Vapors Cloud in the tank, you have got uh, this. Where is it? Come on, there we go. In the tank, you've got your 0.2 ohm coil, as you would expect. The spare coil that you get in here is 0.15, which is even lower down. And as you can tell, they are both single core, plain and simple. That's the way that that's the way Vapors Cloud's looking at us. We're not going to use the 0.15. We're going to be using the we're going to be using this one, which is the 0.2. And we're going to pop this thing back in here, just like that. There we go. There's all the airflows going into the side of the coil. We're going to get the base, and we're going to. Oh yeah, I forgot to forgot to mention this. Seen this? I don't know why they've did this, but they've actually magnetized the base of the tank, even though you've actually still got to bayonet cap and basically push it down and twist it. So I don't know why they've magnetised the base of this. It's a kind of very odd decision. But I mean, you know, it's magnetised, I suppose. It's a thing. You've still got to push the whole thing down and give it a twist to lock it into place, though. So what we're going to do here, we are going to open up this airflow. Now we're going to fill this thing up. What are we going to fill it up with? We will fill it up with... 
grenade deer. This is fluid, fluid. It's another one of the uh, juice sponsors for the UK vape show. So we're going to fill this up with grenade deer. I know it's called grenadier. I'm just calling it a wrong name to piss off pugs now. <laughs> Pop the cap back on, give that a twist. There we go. And that's the shift tank from Vapors Cloud all together again. And while I am waiting on this thing soaking up, I'm going to get my G-Class. Is the batteries fresh in here? Nope, that's too... <laughs> Battery indicators are at the top. They're basically on their way out. And that's, that's going to need a lot of power. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take off. The uh, Asgard RDA, again from Vapors Cloud, strangely enough. And I'm going to pop a couple of new batteries in here. Because these stock coilers, especially the coils that are lower down, and that's why I'm not using the 0.15 out of it, but well, that's way too low. But these stock coilers, especially the ones that are pretty low down in ohms, they do like a lot of power. And to get a lot of power without the batteries struggling, it's always better to use a freshly charged set of batteries, which is what I am exactly doing right now. G Class V2, G Class V2 from <laughs> SX Mini. That doesn't look right with the purple tank sitting on top. Yeah, we're going to go for a manual lock with this. Continue, save and exit. This should have soaked up by now. Oh yeah, it's soaked up. 100 watts straight off the bat with the shift tank. And we're off, airflow control's fully open. <sighs> that is a lot of flavour. It's surprising because it's a rather small coil. That is a lot of flavour coming from this thing. Little bit on the hot side for my liking. So I am going to bump this down just a touch. 80 watts we're going to run at now. That should be a bit better for my throat. Oh, yeah. That is some serious flavour out of this thing. Wow. Serious flavour out of that. And there we go. That was the shift tank from Vapors Cloud. What do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. Well, they've went with a coil line that's rather recognisable to a lot of people out there that are using stock coil sub ohm tanks, especially the stock coil sub ohm tanks that take this type of coil. The coil that Vapors Cloud are including in this, whether they've actually made the coil or not, it's, going to, it's probably going to be a third party manufacturer that made the coil for them. Zero issues, it's fucking good. Seriously good flavour out of these coils, but this type of coil, you've always gonna you're always gonna get good flavour out from it. You're always gonna get good flavour. It's a simple single core, not a multi-core, it's a simple single core wide bore coil with lots and lots of cotton wrapped around that coil to make sure that it's getting a good supply of liquid as you're cranking the thing up to 80 or 100 watts. I've got zero issues with this thing. Zero issues. I do have a question mark though. Why did they magnetize the base? Because it's a rather strong magnet that's at the base of this thing, but you've still got to push the base in and twist it to lock it in. So I don't know why they magnetized it. I'm thinking maybe, maybe one of the original ideas for the shift tank was to have just the top of the tank, because if I was to do this, right, there's the tank off, and there's the base still on the mod, and I'm thinking possibly what one of the original ideas might have been was to have this thing simply magnetised onto the base, like that, but, I mean, technically speaking, it can actually still be used like that. <sighs> the problem is there's a big huge gap around there, which means the thing's not lined up. You've still got to push it down and you still have to twist it to lock it into place. So I'm thinking maybe one of the original ideas for this is they were going to go with the idea of having like a pod tank system 
where this part is simply held on by a magnet. But then they decided at the last minute, nope, you're not going to get a decent enough connection, especially for the 0.15 ohm coil. You need a really good connection for that. So they added in the bayonet at the last minute because that's a bloody strong magnet at the base of this thing. It's a seriously strong magnet. I mean, I'm just, just popping that in. Look, that's not going anywhere. That is a seriously strong magnet, but you've still got that gap, even though it can still be used if it's only been magnetized in. But that gap's really annoying, so you push it down, twist it, and that's it firmly locked in place. I'm thinking this tank may have had another purpose early on in its design, and they decided to scrap the idea and go straight down the road of a full-out stock coil sub ohm tank and drop the whole pod tank idea, because it's the only reason I can come up with for having a bayonet screw-on base along with a magnet, because there's no reason for the magnet to still be in there. There's no reason at all, and it's not as if anything else in the box, which is this box, is going to convert this thing into a magnetized cut into a magnetized pod tank because again you've still got to push the thing in and give it a quarter ton to bayonet the base down onto the top down onto the base of the tank so kind of odd decision very odd decision apart from that i mean that's a niggly point to be honest apart from that there's, there's nothing wrong with this thing there really isn't i mean if you look at the top of this you have got your two valve fill ports at the very top here can get a little bit messy if you're using a slightly wider nib in this thing, but you've got your 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 valve top style fill here to prevent any leakage if you're doing that with the tank a lot, because I know that some of the older tanks uh, from the beginning of last year that had very, very wide openings at the top here can get a bit messy when you're taking the top of the top of these tanks off to fill the tank back up. So they've included flap valve things in here to stop the liquid from spilling back out into the cap. But the one thing that's impressing me, got grenadier in this, and that is some serious flavor. That is some really serious flavor coming from this thing. And I shouldn't really be surprised considering the style of coil that they're going for, but I'm always surprised because the coils, this type of coil, is very small. You compare it to a smock coil from the latest TF Air. They're not called TFVs now. You compare it to the stock coil from the TF Air tank from uh, smock. <clears throat> you compare it to the iTaste tank from uh, Vaporesso. And you compare it to other stock coil tank manufacturers out there. Those coils are basically twice the size of the one that you're getting in here. But the way that these coils have been designed, yes, it's still mesh like your smock tanks and like all that, but they've went with less cotton wrapped around the actual coil and they went with much larger juice intakes because they all know that if you're going to be running a stock coil tank at around about 70 to 80 watts or above, you're not going to be using 50-50 juice, <clears throat> 50, 50 PG, 50 BG, because that 50 PG is going to rip the back of your throat out. You're going to be using vegetable glycerin heavy vegetable glycerin juice. Make the coil thinner, less cotton, bigger juice intakes to let the VG flow in, and you end up with a perfect coil. I've always been a fan of this coil type. Always been a fan of this coil type. Because that flavour is fucking phenomenal. And there we go, folks. Something I didn't think I would see Vapors Cloud doing, a stock coil sub -omer released from a company that's much, much better known as a rebuildable company. But I've got to hand it to them. This is probably one of the better stock coil tanks I've came across this year. Oh, not well. <laughs> We're only in February of this year. Let's widen that out. It's one of the best stock coil sub ohm tanks I've came across at least for the past six or seven months at least for the past six or seven months. And the way that, the way that, oh, the monitors have switched off, the way that the industry is heading right now, <clears throat> especially with the disposable ban that's going to be rolling into the UK sometime at the beginning of 2025, as 
the industry, at least for the UK, switches to pods, there's not going to be a lot of stock coilers getting released this year. That's going to be that's going to be the the bet that I'm hedging on. There's not going to be a lot of stock coil tanks getting released at, le at least for the next seven or eight months because a lot of these manufacturers are going to be flooding the market with pod kits to plug the gap that's been left by disposables that are about to be banned, you know, by the end of this year, beginning of next. So if you're after a new stock coil sub-ohm tank, something that takes damn good coils, I'd go for the shift because it's got really, really good flavour. Again, a lot of that flavour's down to the coil, but still, I mean, look at it. It's one of the cleanest looking stock coil tanks I've seen for a very long time. And no, there was no bubble glass included in the box either. I think you're going to be stuck with the straight glass. So it doesn't really take that much liquid, which means, yes, you're going to be filling it quite often. Anyway, big thanks to the folks over at Vapor Spout for sending it over 40 review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. Thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, maybe the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And if that's latest WhatsApp Sunday update vlog in the middle, shout out to the hashtag Flu Army, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members of Keeping Vapor Vic afloat financially. That's what's keeping me in a job. And underneath me is the Vapor Vic logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.